Hey, what's up guys? It's Dark and Duels, and today I'm doing a cubic deck profile. So I'm really excited for this one because this deck just got some really good support in Duel Overload with a, about three new support cards, and they're all really, really, really good support cards. So this deck is just so much more consistent now that we got Cubic Durama and we got a Cubic Ascension. They're both really, really, really good cards that we got in Dual Overload. So without further ado, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell and you come part of Notification Squad, and definitely check out the Ko-Fi and the Patreon down in the description below, and let's get straight on into this. So first off, we're going to be playing three copies of Crimson Nova, the Dark Cubic Lord. So this card is such an OTK maker. If you guys don't know what this card does is, is you basically reveal three cubic monster or three cubic cards in your hand and then once you do you get special summon this card from your side of the field and it also has the ability it's unaffected by other monster effects except for those who have 3,000 or more attack it also has the ability that when this card attacks a monster and destroys a battle you can activate its attack effect it can attack again and then it also has the ability that during the end phase each player takes 3,000 points of damage, which is crazy. So you just have to inflict 5,000 points of damage to your opponent, and then you instantly OTK him with this card because of the end phase, you end turn, and they lose 3,000 life points. But that can be a double-edged sword because you can lose the 3,000 life points as well and lose the game. Then we play three copies of Duza the Meteor Cubic Vessel. This card is usually our one of normal summon monster besides Summoner Monk. But basically this card is if it's normal or special summon, you could send a cubic monster or cubic card from your deck to your graveyard. Which is really important to send like cubic karma and stuff like that from our deck to the graveyard or unification of the cubic lords. It depends on what you need to send to the graveyard uh, to activate its particular ability. Then it also has the ability that if this card... Um, if a monster is sent to the graveyard this turn, while this card's face on the field, you can make this card gain 200 attack for each monster with a different name in your graveyard until the end phase of the turn. So it can get a little bit bigger and help you with the OTKs with this deck a little bit more. Then we play three copies of V-Jum, the Cubic Seed. Now before this new support, this card was kind of like an afterthought, but now this card is like a really pivotal part of the deck because your Crimson Nova is kind of like the OTK maker of the deck, and then V-Jum is kind of like the shield of the deck. So you have a sword and a shield now because this card can't be destroyed by battle or by card or can't be destroyed by battle and it also you can place this card in your spell and trap card zone when it is involved in a battle and then negate and give that opponent's monster a cubic counter now what cubic counters do is as i'm just going to go over this one time in this video is basically what the cubic counters do is is when a monster has a cubic counter it can't attack and its effects are negated which is really good and then it also has the ability that if this card is treated as continuous spell in your uh spell and trap card zone after you move it after that battle during your main phase you can just special summon it back to your side of the field which is really good then for the other cubics we're playing a single copy of buster gunniel the cubic behemoth buster gunniel is really good because it's is good and it's a lot easier to summon now because previously this card was really hard to summon out from the deck but it's not anymore and it's still good because of its name but what it does is it cannot be normal summoner set it must be special summon for your hand by sending three cubic monsters you control to the graveyard and cannot be special summoned other ways and if this card is summoned this way this card gains three inner attack and make can make a second and third attack during each of your battle phase so it can attack three times doing 9,000 damage to your opponent if all three swings go home then it also has the ability that if this card in your possession is sent to the graveyard by your opponent's card, either by battle or by card effect, you can target three cubic monsters in your graveyard and special summon them, and then you can add a cubic card from your deck to your hand. This card is absolutely insane and just a really, really, really good card to be able to summon out on the field. Then we play a single cop a copy of Endora Doom Volt, the Cubic Emperor. This card is it's all right. I don't summon it over the Buster Gunniel all the time, but it is an option. You have to do the same thing to send three cubics from your uh, field to the graveyard. And it also has the ability that if it's summoned this way, you, uh, it gains 2400 attack. And if it's special summoned from your hand, you inflict 800 points of damage to your opponent. And if this card in your possession is destroyed by opponent's card effect, either by battle or by card effect, you can target three cubic monsters in your graveyard and special summon them. And then if you do get to add a cubic monster from your, or cubic card from your deck to your hand. I just played a single copy of Gira uh, Gali, the Cubic King. Uh, this one, you only have to send one cubic card from your hand or your field to the graveyard, and when it's summoned, you inflict 800 points of damage to your opponent, and if it's sent to the graveyard, you get to um, special summon one cubic card, I believe, which is pretty cool. Um, and if it destroys, if this card is destroyed by battle, you can, tar ca you can target two cubics, uh, cubic uh, B-Joms in your graveyard, which is this card, and then special summon them, which is really cool. 
Then we play three copies of Summoner Monk. The Summoner Monks really help out because they get out your um, copy of Doozas to be able to special summon them on the field. And a lot of your spells in the deck help out because you can just immediately rebanish them to get enough card effect off. So Dooza, or this helps get Dooza out on the field quickly. And then we play two copies of Nibiru as well. I do main deck the Nibiru because if I... If I go in with Nibiru and I drop the Nibiru on my opponent's turn and then summon Crimson Nova, I can swing into the Nibiru token and then attack them directly because I can make this card go up to 6,000, which is crazy. So I, they're, usually they're not going to have 6,000 defense on board, so you just drop the Nibiru and attack over it and then switch your Nibiru to attack position, swing one time with this, get rid of the Nibiru token, swing one more time directly for 6,000, and then swing with the Nibiru itself for 3,000, and then you win. So that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's get into the spells. So for the spells, we're going to be playing three copies of Call by the Grave as normal, because this card basically just stops hand traps, and that's the reason you play it. One copy of Reasoning. Reasoning, you call a level, and then uh, draw cards off the top of your deck equal to that monster, equal to the level, or not equal to the level. You draw cards until you hit a monster that can be normal or special summoned, um, and then if it's not the level that your opponent calls, you just special summon it. So we have quite a few targets in the deck. We have Nibiru that you can special summon. Um, you can special summon the Summoner Monks, but you can't special summon any of these monsters, and you can't special summon any of these, so they just immediately go to the graveyard, and then you immediately just keep drawing cards and sending them to the graveyard. But the reason you play this is because it mills a lot of cards out of the deck to be able to trigger a lot of your spells and traps. One copy of Double or Nothing. Double or Nothing is really easy to go into in this deck with Utopia Double, because all you have to do is summon Summoner Monk and put Dooza on the field. Use Dooza effects into the graveyard, make Double or Nothing, Thing, or make Utopia double the Utopia and then swing for 10,000, which is really easy. This card really helps out with their decaying. Three copies of Foolish Burial Goods because you really want to get your spells in the graveyard. Now, I was talking about earlier about how I get my copy of Crimson Nova to 6,000, and it's this card right here. This card gets my Crimson Nova to 6,000 extremely easily because it lets you target a cubing monster you control and a monster your opponent controls, half the opponent's monsters attack, and then double yours, which is bringing Crimson Nova from, Crimson Nova from 3,000 to 6,000 and can then attack twice, which is absolutely crazy. And it also has the ability that you can banish this card from your graveyard and any number of cubic monsters from your graveyard and then target face up monster opponent controls and then um, equal number of banished cubic monsters and place cubic counters on them. Then we also play three copies of Cubic Karma. Cubic Karma is really good because basically this card, the only effect that matters on this card is you can banish it and then if you do, you get to add a cubic monster from your from your deck to your graveyard, or from your deck to your hand. And it also has the ability that when this card is activated, it's kind of a cool effect. It halves your opponent's life points, but it's kind of hard to resolve. Um, when this card um, is activated, you get to target a cubic monster, and then send V-Joms from your deck to the graveyard. Um, and then it gains 800 attack for each V-Jom that was sent. And then during your opponent's turn, if V-Jom the cubic seed is special summoned by the effect of a cubic monster, you can send this card to your graveyard, and if you do half the light, half your opponent's life points. So it's okay, but it kind of punishes your opponent for getting rid of Endor Doom, Buster Gunniel, or the uh, Gen Gendarla. Um, but that's the only way you're really going to resolve that effect. So basically, this card, banish it, and then add a cubic monster or add a cubic card. Then for the last three spells, we play three copies of Cubic Dorma. Dorma is so good in this deck. Like, this card is insane how good this card is. Basically what it does is, is you take no battle damage from attacks involving your Cubic Monster. So you can literally leave V-Jom in attack position and just swing at your opponent with it and give them more and more Cubic Counters. And it's just so good to be able to do. Um, and then it has the ability that once per turn during your main phase, you can either send a Cubic uh, card from your hand to the graveyard. And if you do, you get to draw a card. Which you could send, like... Karma or Unification or Ascension or any of the ones that you need in the graveyard to the graveyard to make them resolve, uh, which usually, which previously we didn't have that ability. Or you can banish this card from your graveyard to target a cubic monster in your grave and add it back to your hand, which could be V Jom or your copy of Crimson Nova or anything that you need to be able to get it back in your hand and then trigger, you know, your other cards, which is really good. So that's it for the spells, guys. Let's get into the traps. This card is crazy. Like, I read that card when it was revealed, and I was like, oh my god, I cannot wait for that. So we're going to then be playing a, just a single copy of a cubic uh, casualty. This card's really good because, I mean, it's okay. It's probably the worst of the new support cards, but I wanted to play it at one because I'm still kind of testing it. I might drop it later, but just... Um, 
Distribute a number of cubic counters on face-up monsters your opponent controls up to the number of cubic monsters you control. And then it has the ability that negates the effects and they can't attack. And then you can banish this card from your graveyard and then target one cubic monster you control. And this turn, each time it destroys a monster of a battle that has a cubic counter, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the original attack of the monster that was destroyed. And you only use this effect once per turn. So cubic casualty is good in my opinion because it's kind of like a win more card, but it's good as well because you can just win more with it. Then we play two copies of Cubic Ascension. Cubic Ascension I really like in this deck because this card basically protects us from losing the game. Because sometimes you will end up with a hand where you can't summon anything but like a V-Jom. And this card is really helpful for that, those hands. That when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can special summon a V-Jom from your deck. And if you do, change the attack target to that card. V-Jom can't be destroyed by battle, and you can put the cubic counter on that monster, which is cool. And then you proceed to damage calculation. But if your life points are 2,000 or higher than your opponent, or your opponents are 2,000 or higher than yours, you can banish this card from your graveyard to special summon a V-Jom from your deck, hand deck, or grave. And if your opponent controlled a monster when this card was activated, you can special summon two more V-Joms. So you can special summon all three V-Joms off this one card. This card is really good. Then we play three copies of Unification of the Cubic Lords. It lets us fusion summon into our Crimson Nova Trinity, but you never really do that. But the real effect about this is that it also, if you can banish from your graveyard, um, when a monster, a cubic monster, leaves the field or is destroyed by battle, and then you get to target, you get special summon a level four or lower cubic monster from your hand or deck, ignoring and summoning conditions, which is really helpful to get some of your cubic monsters out of your deck. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck. So for the extra deck, we're going to be playing just a single copy of our Crimson Nova Trinity. I play it for the occasional moment that I'll open up like all three of my Crimson Novas, like is very rare but sometimes you'll have all three and you'll be like man i can i can do that so it's kind of there more as the hope that you can do it not more of that i'm gonna do it but it's a really good card and if you summon it you win uh essentially then we play a single copy of Utopia and Utopia Double, so we can attack for 10,000, like I told you guys about earlier with Double or Nothing. One copy of number Silent or number 101 Silent Honor Arc. This card really catches our opponent off guard by taking their opponent, taking their monster. This card's really good still, and it kind of just catches your opponent off guard. One copy of Tornado Dragon just to pop back row, because you have back row destruction and you have special summon monster destruction, and you have a big swing as well. Baguska just to stall, just in case we need to. Exiton Knight to blow board. Abyss Dweller to negate great graveyard effects number 60 because you can make you know your monsters really big or draw extra cards and send them to the grave stuff like that this card's really helpful one copy of Magnite Crusadia Avermax because this card helps out with OTKs if you need it uh, unicorn just to bounce stuff phoenix to pop monsters pop spells Cerberus to pop monsters uh, Link Rebo, just in case they attack into us, and then my new favorite, Link 1, is Relinquished Anima. The Relinquished Anima, basically you just send a cubic uh, V-Jom to the graveyard, and then it lets you take an opponent's monster and equip to this card that it points to, which is really helpful. So they have a monster in position in columns 1, or columns 4, or um, columns uh, 2. You can summon this, and then take that opponent's monster, which is really cool, and then it gains attack equal to that opponent's monster, which is really neat. So, that's it for the deck, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a really cool, fun deck to play around with, um, and it's relatively budget in the main deck. You don't even really need an extra deck, except for this. Like, other than this... You don't really have to have anything. So it's a super fun budget deck that I hope you guys definitely will try out and enjoy. Um, I really enjoyed playing this deck when I play it. Um, and definitely give it a shot. So And everybody has it just about now because of the movie pack being released like three times. So anyways guys, this is Durgum Duels. Don't forget, to like, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell on there so you can come part of the notification squad. Definitely check out the Ko-Fi and the Patreon down in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See you around guys.